This is the shame of a community, the conditions in which the old are left to live out their final days after a life of work and service. In the city of Waterford alone, half the lonely elderly are living in substandard buildings without the most basic of services, conditions to which this community has been pricked to literally respond, as they call their new independent housing agency, which has been set up to tackle the problem. My role, uh, I suppose, was initially with two others, uh, uh, Michael O'Doherty and Jim Mollis. We founded the organisation uh, in 81-82. Respond is actually a response, that's where the name comes from, is a response to the need of the time, which was for a specific case of, of housing for elderly people. In that era and through, you know, the, through the 80s, the, the quality of private rental accommodation that was being availed of by the elderly was of a, a very poor quality. People, to be quite honest, were living in slum conditions right across the country. At the time we felt that it was necessary for us to respond to that. And uh, so that's where we got involved initially in starting a scheme for housing for uh, elderly people. And then later on the idea was to move in to housing for young families. Respond, I suppose, started uh, as a Waterford-based organisation, as you know but uh, didn't ever set her, uh, limits to their own horizons and uh, spread out very quickly into the southeast generally and then uh, nationwide. And our regulations came in in 1984 which allowed us to be formed formally as a housing association and then we got various grants and mortgages from government from that time on. The local authorities really only got involved from 1991 onwards when the rental subsidy scheme came in by government. That was, that was a very definite turning point and just as it were from going to, uh, from hand to mouth uh, previous to that, we were now in a situation where you could depend effectively on getting government mortgages for the housing you were delivering for young families. Well, we currently have uh, just under 350 people working for the organisation right across the country. And so we have our own in-house uh, design team made up of architects, technicians, engineers, quality surveyors. Our head office is here in Waterford. We also have regional offices in Dublin and Galway. And we have sub-regional offices in Cork, in Ennis, in Tullamore, um, in Navan, uh, in Dundalk. So it's a fairly extensive range of uh, regional and local offices right across the country. We're operating in 22 of the 26 counties at present, either we have houses there, we're in the planning process um, or we, we're planning to do some houses in the future. Welcome to Show House. This week we're in Leakslip and we're featuring a social housing project run by Respond. On this development called Eastern Meadows, Respond are working with Kildare County Council. And this is unusual for us because these new houses are not for sale. And at the end of the week, the keys will be handed over to the two families who have been given these homes. When a new scheme is being constructed, about six months before the scheme is completed, um, our allocations and assessment staff are informed by the project manager that it's coming online. So they begin the process then of uh, seeking applications for that scheme. So we would go for a mix of people, single parents, uh, older couples uh, with no children, and also uh, conventional uh, families uh, with children. So we go for to try and create as big a mix as possible so as to ensure the success of the estate from the very beginning. The ethos of Respond is um, extremely important. Respond really begins when people get the key of the door to, the, to their particular property. Um, at that stage, the job of the charity is essentially to start building communities um, and the challenge to the people who work within Respond is very much to facilitate the building of communities, which I wouldn't underestimate. Um, I think it's a, it's a huge um, contribution to make to our society um, and one that's extremely important and is going to endure for a very long time to come. The responsibilities of uh, a respond tenant stretched beyond, I suppose, the cartilages of their own premises. It was a responsibility to build a better community. And uh, if you go and visit respond developments across the country, even today, um, I think you can sense that 
that there is a pride of place involved. We like to get the community involved, whether it be through a committee. Some estates have committees, some don't. We recently in introduced um, enablers and there's quite a few people from the estate involved in this, where it's kind of pulling together ideas, etc. And a lot of hopefully kind of future developments and that will be coming through the tenants and their ideas and their input. This idea is fantastic. You know, you get to you know, have opinions, you, you know, you get to have a say in how your estate is run and what you'd like, you know, in the community centre and, and that kind of thing. Respond's idea is absolutely fantastic. But I, I think when it really comes down to it, it's up to the individual to make it work. And, and I think that's, that's what's going to make the community if all of the individuals are interested in making their community a good community. Uh, the business we're in is creating communities and the creation of communities doesn't come around simply when you build a house uh, or build houses. You actually have to create a volume of understanding about how people live, how they integrate together and what their needs are in raising a family, raising children and in, in the wider commitments and inter interrelationships that occur. Respond believe that people need to understand how the sector works and how housing and education, health and all the other factors come together. To do that we've created a number of courses which started with the occasional ad hoc course being uh, one-offs for local authority staff up to what we have now which is a degree course which covers the whole spectrum of working, living and developing communities. I think Respond's always had an interest in it and a focus on education, which is, is one of its main strengths. And, and the course has grown out of work that was done you know, in the 90s on certificates and diplomas. And indeed, we start off at certificate level and build our way up. So that's always been a big strength of Respond, that it has that focus on education um, and that the vision for this type of a course has come out of that. Since 1984, Respond has built and developed more than 4,500 properties. We manage more than 3,500 properties. We have developed in 24 of the 26 counties. We have 90 community buildings in our estates, 150 estates. We provide childcare services to more than 1,000 children across 36 different uh, childcare units. We have more than 650 housing for the elderly units across the country as well. Uh, I think we are probably the biggest provider of social housing outside the local authorities. Well, for the last number of years, we've been providing uh, support uh, for homeless people. We have a very successful transitional housing project in Dublin, which is providing accommodation and support uh, for 48 men at the moment. Respond believes that we've created uh, an excellent housing model which allows for integration and community development and we're now using that expertise to help other communities, for example in South Africa and Kokstad, to develop the same kind of integration within their housing communities. We're now focusing on the delivery of accommodation to traveller families uh, right across the country and we've just completed um, a new traveller accommodation and supports policy. People are entitled to justice. It's not charity we're offering them, it's justice we're offering them. And therefore they are entitled to a better uh, processes, uh, to better government processes, to a better way of accessing housing in such a fashion that they can say, as of right, I need uh, an environment where my family can grow up having access to resources. You need champions, uh, not only to develop a model, but to actually implement it and prove that it works, uh, not only as effectively, but better in many instances than the existing models. Um, Pat has done that. He, he doesn't um, sing his own praises too often, um, if, if at all, if the truth be told. But without people like him, there wouldn't be um, a social housing or a voluntary housing program of the quality that exists now. The issue of where we go in the future to respond is a very key issue. Up till now, we would have been the people you might have described as pulling people out of the hole, right? Um, we have done very little advocacy work. Uh, you won't find our names in public too often. We have been more anxious to build houses, to build communities, than to agitate about them. Uh, we have decided in the last year 
that with government policy going in the opposite direction to the needs of the low-income people, it needs an advocacy approach, and that's what we intend to take from now on. So side by side with the housing development, you will now find that respond with much more often in the papers, saying to government and to politicians, you need to have a larger understanding of housing than you have at present. It isn't all about bricks and mortar. It's about providing facilities for local people in the community in an integrated housing pattern. Integration is the absolute key to the development of social housing in Ireland at the moment. That's the way it has to go.